that, that they actually received something and they're also thanking God for the people that actually partnered with them and in a, a, a crazy cool kind of supernatural economy begins to happen, which is, accelerate, which is accelerated by the catalyst of giving. And then he goes back to Jesus. Oh, and by the way, praise be to God for his indescribable gift. Friends, God is a giver. And he is the most selfless person within the universe. There's nobody more selfless than God. There's nobody that gets a better rap than God Almighty. And there's nobody more selfless, nobody more caring, nobody more giving. In James chapter one, verse five, it, the Bible says something crazy about God the giver. It says, in his giving, he abradeth not. Now, I wanna just stop and just tell you that you can pretend like you know what that means if you want to, or you can actually learn what that means. One of the things that's very unimpressive of Bible quoters for me is they're so impressed that they quote the Bible, they really don't care if they actually know what it means. That, that right there drives me crazy. As soon as I see that word, that's a challenge for me. Um, God giveth and he abradeth not. Doesn't that sound so stained glass? Well, the Lord giveth and he abradeth not. Ooh, the man of God. Well, do you know what that means? Because it's very important that you understand because this is one of the principles of God. This is a, this is a principle that God has for giving. And guys, I want to just tell you that anytime that you come before God, you wonder, okay, I had a friend of mine recently that got into some trouble, which all my friends get into trouble, okay? And because he got in trouble, he asked me a very legitimate question. He goes, look, I know I deserve punishment for this. I did something I shouldn't have done. And I know that I deserve punishment with it. But I want to ask God to please fix this. But I don't think I can because I deserve punishment. So that's how it goes. I'm like, well, if that's your thinking, then get ready for hell because you also deserve hell. If your thinking is, if it's right for me to be punished, then I cannot go to God and ask him for mercy, then you're not even saved. Oh, see, religious don't like, religion people don't like that. See, religion people, people that are religious, they have a much higher value for, for punishment than they do for restoration. If the body of Christ had the heart of King Jesus and we were much more about restoration than we are, for, than we are about punishment, dude, the world would go, whoa, where does that come from? Because that does not come from Texas. And we'd be able to answer that, Right? So I'm like, no, no, I need you to rethink this. Go before God and say, God, I have nobody else to seek mercy for on this subject. Just you. And I promise you, he's not gonna be mad at you for that. Listen, he knows if you're working him or not. Can, can, I, just, can I just touch on that for just a minute? Because sometimes you yourself, you will condemn yourself. Your own heart will condemn you. And your own heart, which is fleshly, will, will go into automatic pilot and partner with the enemy against you. And your emotions, your emotions and your own heart will beat you up sometimes. Right? And be like, okay, here's the deal. I, I want to come before God, but I know that I deserve this trouble that I'm in. And so here's the deal. I'm going to let myself be in trouble for a long time. And once I feel like I have paid the price good enough, then I'll come before God and I'll ask him to clean it up. Wow. And that's, listen, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that is a way of death. So here's what you decide whenever you do that. Okay, all hell is breaking loose. I can't invite God into that. Okay, anytime you, anytime you are running away from God to find a solution, and then you're gonna come back and present your own self-righteousness that you allowed yourself to be in trouble for two or maybe three weeks so that you could feel good and you could approach God, there's no faith involved in that. Zero. The just shall live by faith. I'm going to ask you again. The just shall live by faith. Righteous people run to faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, what's your faith? Your faith is that he's better than you. Your faith is that he's still approachable, even though you are a knucklehead. That's your faith. Your faith is that he's good, even though you're not. Your faith is that he's awesome, even though you have failed once again. And then there's this part of you that says, well, I, I can't. I just can't come before God and ask him because God, God, I feel like I'm working him. 
because I didn't come before him before I was in trouble. Now that I'm in trouble, I'm coming before him. Can I tell you what that is? Can I tell you what that is? That's jailhouse religion. I'm gonna talk to you about jailhouse religion. My friends who have one of the most powerful and most effective jailhouse ministries that there is, is right in here, Greg Stewart and his beautiful bride, right on? Love you guys. And I wanna tell you about people in prison. When people in prison give their heart to Jesus, when they do, People say, well, my God, that's just jailhouse religion. Blah, 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 blah. And then when they don't, they say, well, my God, they even go to jail and there ain't nothing you can do for them. So I wanna just, just tell you this. If, if you've done something wrong and you need to repent and you need to run before God and say, God, I need this fixed in my life because this is, this is out of control and this is whack and God, now I'm in trouble. I wanna just, just ask you, if... If you had a kid and if your kid got in trouble and you sent your kid to your room, would you be happy with your kid or would you be mad with your kid if your kid repented once they went to the room? Would you be, would you be extremely happy that they didn't repent once they were in trouble? Because that would make you bipolar. God is not bipolar. And when you're in trouble, you cry out to God. I'm going to say that again. When you're in trouble, you cry out to God. And so, so this is the deal. There's a place, let me, let me throw this out there to you. You know, I'm in, a, I'm in a great phase right now with my kids and with my grandkids. And I have seven grandkids. My seventh is about to be born. He's already alive and he's already well, I promise you. And he's, and he's about to be born. And I bless him and I love him. And his name's Jeremiah Cross. His mama, Rama, Rama told me when she was a little bitty girl that when she grows up, she's gonna have a baby named Jeremiah Cross. I'm not making that up. I'm talking about she wasn't even 10 years old. I'm gonna have a baby and his name's gonna be Jeremiah Cross. I'm like, well, rock on, little sister. Let's, let's pray for him right now. Let's just pray. So we started praying for Jeremiah Cross when she was a little girl. Okay, well, she's about to have a little boy, and his name is Jeremiah Cross. Amen. Okay? And it just so happens that his daddy's name is J.C. <laughs> Paula Ledbetter's son, J.C. Ledbetter, who married my daughter. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. All right, I need to quit it. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Stop it, quit it, quit it, quit it, quit it, quit it. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. So if we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you this, okay? If you have a baby, okay, it's like, here's my five-year-old, Brother Rooster, Pastor Rooster, right? Barrett Allen Brewer, who has a brother by the name of Branch Allen Brewer, who is the son of Benjamin Allen Brewer, who is the son of Troy Allen Brewer, okay? If Barrett is in trouble, and I say, okay, dude, I told you, don't do that. And you just did that. You're in bad trouble. You need to go to your room right now. Okay, if he's working me, and if he goes in there, and if he fake cries, and if he starts to work me, and say, Papa, Papa, I'm sad in my room, which is exactly what he said to me. <laughs> I'm like, you're sad in there. I'm very sad in this room. Okay. Okay, so the brothers want now in the room. I don't think he gives a rip over what he's in trouble about. But I wanna, I wanna ask you something. Am I mad that he's working me? No, because now we're gonna engage. Now we're gonna talk about things. I know he's working me. I know he is. I would work me if I was him. I mean, I promise you. So I'm like, why are you sad in your room? Because there's no one in here to play with and all the toys that are in here are stupid little, little kid toys and the big toys are outside. I'm like, well, are you sad?